We're saved by grace. And that's the same way we have to learn how to live. And grace is the power of the Holy Spirit to make something happen in our lives that we could never make happen. Grace is God's undeserved favor. It says in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, we're saved by grace, God's unmerited favor to us sinners. But it's also power. It was the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead. If the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in us, it shall quicken. Give power to us. God will change you. But you have to go to him. That's why I tell people, take all the notes that you have from these conferences. Now, your biggest thing that you need to do when you go home is now you have your private meeting with God. You've met with me. Now, I want you to go have a private meeting with God. Because I can only take you so far, he's got to take you the rest of the way. I can teach you the truth, but I can't change you. So now you take your notes, you go, and you say, boy, God, man, I got some problems. <laughs> and you can even let God show you which one he wants to, you to cooperate with him on first. What do you think is the biggest area in your life, the number one thing that you need to address? Then work with God on that for a period of time. You say, well, how do I work with God? Well, first of all, you study in that area. If you have a bad temper, studying prosperity is not going to help you get over it. <laughs> Hello. If you're impatient and you lose your temper 20 times a day, then you need to study patience. You need to study anger. You need to look up every scripture you can find. You need to look up definitions. You need to write things out in longhand or put them on your computer if you prefer to do that. There's nothing that's going to help you like your own personal private study.